You're listening to the Be a Better Lawyer podcast with Dina Cataldo, episode 145. So how do high achieving lawyers break through generations of being taught that we have to grind ourselves into the ground to get results for clients, build a successful business and create a life we love? While law schools are busy teaching the rule of law, they're slacking on teaching us how to be a better human to create for ourselves the success we thought we'd achieve after law school. This podcast bridges the gap between law school and life. Hello there. How are you doing? I am doing so well. It has been so beautiful here, and I got to go to the nearby college town last weekend. It's UC Davis, if you're familiar with it. Um, And I got to just walk around, enjoying the campus, finding just weird things and really cool things, like this really beautiful tree that looked like it was made to be climbed and sat in and enjoyed. It was fantastic. I just love exploring the nooks and crannies of little towns. There's always something to appreciate, and I can't wait until things open up again. How about you? All right, so enough about that. Let's talk about the power of and. When I first started toying with the idea of expanding my interests beyond the law, I had my first real, at least aware experience of cognitive dissonance. I talked about cognitive dissonance in the last episode, episode 144. So here's the quick and dirty of it. Cognitive dissonance is the discomfort. Let's just call it pain because it feels painful sometimes. It's the discomfort between where we are right now and where we want to be. Our brain has this does not compute moment when we think about something that we haven't done yet. And it wasn't my first time experiencing cognitive dissonance, but it was the first time that I noticed it. We all have cognitive dissonance until we decide we're going to work on overcoming it. So if you think, I'll wait until it goes away to do XYZ dream, it doesn't. You just have to decide that you want what you want more than the discomfort. When I decided I wanted a business and to keep practicing the law, it was the first time in a long time I asked myself to dream outside of my vision of becoming a lawyer. It brought up a lot of thoughts. And any time we want to do anything outside of our comfort zone, that's what happens. We just have thoughts. So for me, I had thoughts like, I didn't have enough time to do anything else. I didn't have enough money to explore ideas. I can't even think about doing anything but working because I love the security it brings. People are going to judge me. I mean, I had a ton of different thoughts and they were all very limiting thoughts, thoughts that didn't help me expand my view. And the difference between where I was when I was toying with the idea and deciding to believe I was capable of more is just one thing, how I think. I went from lack mentality to an abundance mentality where there isn't a problem planning time for what's important to me. I went from judging myself and believing others were judging me to having compassion for myself. Most importantly, instead of thinking I could either be a lawyer or grow my own business, I began thinking in terms of and. I could be a lawyer and have a business. I could be a lawyer and cultivate other interests. I could be devoted to my job and my business and create time for myself. I could have the business and the legal practice and take time off. This may seem like a small difference here, but when you are adding to your life, the brain just tends to think in limits. Like, I don't have enough time. I can't do both. I don't know how. I see this with my clients and I help them cross that gap between lack mentality, excuse me, and the abundance mentality. One of my clients, Amon, is practicing law full-time and building a business completely unrelated to the law on top of her practice and keeping her billables up. And she's learning how to do it without the overwhelm. My client, Jonathan, is building up a brand new section of his practice, exceeding his goals there, and he's working less. He's taking Saturdays off now, too. I'm a really big fan of that because I started doing that now, too. So how do you get from feeling trapped by the amount of time you're spending in your legal practice and implementing this power of and? 
I cultivated the feeling of abundance over and over again. Saying and to ourselves instead of or has to be practiced over and over. Here are three false beliefs I want to talk to you about so that you can get some awareness of them and work on them to help you move away from this lack mentality, believing that there's just one choice or the other. And I'm going to focus on these because our thoughts about time prevent us from embracing the and that we're capable of and these thoughts about what we are doing, like whether or not we're making the right decision, is also something that really holds us back. It sabotages us from getting what we really want. So the very first thought that I want to bring your awareness to is not believing that you will make the right choice. I see this come up when I work with clients who are multi-passionate. I went through this same thing. And what happens is, is we believe that they will, that we'll make the wrong choice. And then we get worried that the indecision means that we're making a wrong choice. (laughs) I mean, we can't get around it. And so then we end up making no choice at all. So I help my clients see that it doesn't matter which goal they choose. Their brain is going to have the same thoughts. The same thoughts are going to come up. They're going to worry that they're making the wrong choice. And then we start to look at the choices and really dig in, and then it becomes easier for them to make a decision. So for instance, you can make your billables and start a new venture. You can choose one goal now, and later on, after you have given this like your all, you can change your mind down the line if you decide that that first goal no longer serves you. I did that myself. Like I took the time to really look at my first business and understand that that is not the lifestyle I wanted to create for myself, that that was not what I wanted, and then I decided to change my mind and keep my legal practice. So you can do this too. Another thing, you might be able to incorporate your interests if they really work together well. No matter what you decide, the mental work that you do to move forward on a goal will serve you in growing your capacity to have more of everything that you want in your life. Another example of a belief that we must overcome is the thought, the more I work, the more valuable I am. Does that sound familiar to you? I want you to know that we don't create value with our time. We create value with the quality of our thoughts. That's how my client Jonathan surpassed his goal of clients hiring his firm in a brand new area of practice in the first two months of us working together. He worked on the quality of his thoughts rather than working longer hours. When he did that, he was able to take the actions that he needed, the most impactful actions towards his goal. And he's doing this work right now to make his next month's goal even easier to achieve. When we work on the quality of our thoughts, we change the way we talk to prospective clients. We speak more simply in a way that clicks with potential clients so they understand what we're offering them. That makes it easier to attract clients. It also makes it easier to be more productive. We become more focused when we are intentional about our focus. This allows us to say, yes, I want what I want, I want what I have, and I want more without the hustle or the long hours. One last belief I want to dispel here is the belief, I should do more. When I ask my clients what it means to do more, they think, you know, what more do they think they should be doing? They realize that they actually already did what they needed to prioritize that week and they wouldn't have changed anything. What they really mean when they say I should do more is that they want to do everything, which is impossible and it's actually not desirable. I ask them if you did all of the things What would that mean? If you had nothing left on your plate, nothing left on your calendar, what would that mean? Of course, that means they don't have a business. It's all done. So they have a failed business. (laughs) Saying I should do more is a really a way to beat ourselves up, telling ourselves that we're not enough right now, that we're not doing enough for ourselves, our business, our family, fill in the blank. It's a thought you've been accustomed to thinking. It feels comfortable. It's become a habit. 
The mental energy that we spend here can be crippling and prevent us from using the power of and. That's why it's so important to recognize that every time we're having the thought, I should do more, that is not helpful. I've seen it happen with myself and it feels horrible. The time we spend suffering is time we could be using towards achieving what we want most. So I want to caution you when you're doing this work that it's easy to continue beating yourself up, right? You feel really comfortable doing it with these kinds of thoughts and you might believe that you shouldn't be thinking these thoughts. Instead of doing that, know that this is normal. Be compassionate towards yourself. Get curious about when you think these thoughts. When is it happening? Are there certain activities that are happening around you when you have these thoughts? Ask yourself if they're helpful. I'm going to give you a hint here. They're not. They're limiting you. (laughs) But you can appreciate where you are right now and want more for yourself. Once you commit to this power of and, the time truly does figure itself out. If you need help creating time and calming the overwhelm in your life so you can embrace the power of and that we've talked about here, this is what I help clients with. You can book a call with me to learn how we can work together and during our time together, you'll start to see some of the thoughts preventing you from getting what you want. You can book a call with me at dinacataldo.com. And I'd very much appreciate it if you took two minutes right now to leave a review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other lawyers find the podcast by boosting the algorithm, right? More people see the podcast and listen to it and get some help from it. I hope you are having a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.